Hello and welcome back to the channel, I'm Craig, also known as the Deployment Guy, here with another video tutorial for people just starting out in the world of Microsoft Inching. Today's tutorial demonstrates how to set up Remote Help in Microsoft Inching. Remote Help is a very handy tool which basically gives the end user the ability to grant admin or help desk access to their machine if they're having issues. This video will go through the required licensing, how to enable remote help in your tenant, the RBAC roles needed for remote help, the packaging and deployment of the remote help application, and finally, a demonstration of the end user experience. Now, remote help isn't a free feature, and you do actually require a license to use it. Now, this license can be obtained in various ways, such as purchasing a standalone add-on. It's also included in various Intune plans, such as the Intune suite. Now, if you're already using Microsoft Intune, there's a good chance you've already got access to remote help, so it's definitely worth going and checking your licenses to see what you've already got access to. Now, in my environment, I'm using an E5 developer license. So if we go under licenses, as you can see, I've got a Microsoft 365 E5 developer license. Unfortunately, remote help isn't included in this, so I've had to go out and take a free trial of Microsoft Intune remote help here, which gives me access to 250 licenses. So once you've got other licensing set up, the next thing we want to do is actually enable remote help in our tenant. So for this, we're going to go to the Microsoft Intune admin portal. Now, the first thing we're going to do is go to tenant administration. And we're going to select Intune add-ons. Basically, all we're doing here is just double checking that we've got the remote help add-on enabled. Yep, there we can see it, remote help, and we've got 89 days left in the trial. Also, these other add-ons we can purchase if we wanted to. Uh, in this instance, we're not going to. So the next thing we're going to do is go to Remote Help. And then we're going to select Settings. And then Configure. Under Enable Remote Help, obviously, we're going to switch this to Enabled. Allow Remote Help to unenroll devices. Entirely up to you. In this instance, we're going to select Not Allowed and disable chat, again, completely up to you. In this instance, it's probably quite helpful, so we'll leave it at no. And then we're gonna press save. Now, before you can use remote help, we need to actually assign some RBAC permissions to our help desk operators. So if you haven't already, create a new group. We'll a security group, we'll give it a name. So we'll call it users hyphen help desk operators. We're going to put a couple of people in there, so under members, select no members selected, and then select users, and we'll just put Charlie Taylor and Connor Roberts in there, and then select on that, and then select create. We'll give that a refresh. As you can see, the help desk operators group is now there. So the next thing we need to do is actually assign permissions to that group. So under tenant administration and roles. Now you can create a custom role if you wanted to, but in this instance, we're gonna use help desk operator. Now if we go under the properties of this role, obviously there's various admin permissions in there that they can use. But if we scroll down, as you can see under remote help, they've got view screen, elevation, take full control, and unattended control. Now, under assignments, we obviously want to assign this to our help desk operators. So we're going to select assign. The assignment's going to be, we'll call it remote help permissions. Select next on that. Under add groups, we're going to add in our help desk operators group we've just created. So we'll take that and select, and then select next. Next, we're going to select add all users under scope groups, under scope tags, leave it as the default, and then select create. Okay, so once you've set your permissions, the next thing we need to do is actually apply some licenses to our end users. So in the 365 admin center, select licenses, then we're going to select Microsoft Intune Remote Help. We're going to click into this. Obviously, we can do individual users or groups. We'll select groups, assign licenses, and the first group we're going to assign the license to is obviously help desk operators. And we'll also assign it to our staff as well. And we'll select to sign on that. So I'll give that a few moments. 
So as you can see, the state is says in progress, but eventually when those licenses apply, any member of those groups will be able to log in to the remote help application on their computers. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is actually package and deploy the remote help application. So I'll post this link in the description. Um, it's got lots of information in here about the pre UX needed and also firewall considerations. Uh, but if we scroll down, the bit we're interested in is actually the download of the remote help application and how to deploy it as a Win32 app. So we're going to click this link and download the application. Now, it does seem to give it a bit of a funky name, so we're going to take off the numbers at the end. Now, I'm going to copy this file and I'm going to place it in my Win32 packaging directory in the source folder. Now, the next thing we need to do is run a command prompt. And we want to change the directory to the, where the content prep tool is. Next thing we need to do is run the Intune Win App Util XE. Right, so the source folder is going to be the folder where we've just copied that application to. So we'll, we'll paste that in there. The next thing is the setup file. Obviously, we renamed it to Remote Help Installer. So we'll just paste that in there. And the output folder is going to be the Win32 packaging output. Do you want to specify a catalog file? We'll select no on that. Just give that a few moments. Okay. So that application is now packaged into a Win32. So if we go to the output folder, yep, there you can see the Intune Win file. Okay, so once that's packaged, the next thing we need to do is import it into Intune. So we're going to select apps. Windows, select add. The app type is going to be a Win32, so we'll select that. Next, we need to browse to the directory where we created the package, which was in the Win32 packaging output folder. So I'm going to select this file, then open, select OK on that. Next, we'll give it a meaningful name, so we'll call it Remote Help. And the description, I'm going to change this to Remote Help installer select ok on that now we're filling the publisher with microsoft and also input the app version and i'm going to select next for the install command and uninstall commands if we go to the web page that i showed you earlier and scroll down it actually gives us these commands so i'm going to copy the install command i'm going to back to intune and i'm just going to paste it in the install command field and i'm going to do the same again for the uninstall so i'm going to copy this here back to Intune and I'm going to paste it in here. For installation time required, we can leave it at the default 60. Allow available uninstall, up to you, but I'm going to select no. And we'll select next. Operating system architecture, I'll select 64 bit. Minimum OS, I'm going to select Windows 10 22 H2. And select next. For rules format, we're going to use manually configured detection rules. And again, if we go back to the web page that I showed you earlier and scroll down even further, it gives us the actual rules we need to set up. So the rule type is file, and I'm going to take a copy of the path. Go back to Intune. I'm going to click Add. Rule type, file. I'm going to paste the path in there. Next, I'm going to copy the file name, which was remotehelp.exe. I'm going to paste that in there and the detection method is going to be a string and the operator will be greater than or equal to so if i go back to intune select string operator greater than or equal to now for the value what we don't want to use is the application version which was this number here we're actually looking for the file version and the easiest way to find this is to manually install the application on a computer, like I have done here. Next, what we're going to do is we'll go to the C drive of this computer. And in Program Files, you can see there's a folder there called Remote Help. So I'm going to click into this and scroll down. 
Now there's an executable called remote help. So if we right click this and go to the properties, under the details tab, you can see under file version, it actually gives us a number. So if we go back to Intune, this is the number we need to input here. 10.2.1.0.0.2.5.1.0.0.0. We'll select OK on that. Select Next. Dependencies, there's no dependencies. Supersedence, again, nothing. So we'll select Next on that. Assignment, I'm going to select it to All Devices. We'll click Next on that. And then Create. Okay, so now that everything's set up, I'm going to try and demonstrate this the best I can using two virtual machines side by side. So the machine on the left has got Charlie Taylor logged in, who, if you remember, we added to the help desk group. The machine on the right has got Josh Cullen logged in, who is a member of the staff group. So on the help desk machine, I'm going to go into the start menu and I'm going to launch remote help. And I'm going to do the same on the staff machine. Okay, so back on the help desk machine, you'll notice we've got two options. We've got get help or we've got give help. Obviously, this is the help desk machine, so we're giving help. So we're going to select get a security code. It's then going to pop up and give us a code. Obviously, the help desk will communicate this with a member of staff via an email or over the phone. So on the staff computer, they're getting help. They would then input this code. So 21HZQL, select submit. Now back on the help desk machine, it's going to start connecting and we should get two options. We've got take full control or view screen. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to select take full control. And then on the staff machine, it's going to start initiating that process. And it's going to ask them to accept that. So I'm going to select allow. Give that a few moments. And as you can see, that's now connected. Once again, this has been the Deployment Guy. Please do hit that like and subscribe button. Your support really does help me to grow the channel and continue making videos just like this. Until next time, thank you very much.